right to me to finally see my work on Manohar Rai Sardasai take the shape of a book. Goa is going through a healthy trend of publishing, and just as well. It encourages the writer and it celebrates the theme which otherwise would have been lost. I've been asked about my journey in writing this work on Manohar Rai Sardasai. It started as a lecture room, um, as a lecture room experience in the MA class with listening to a teacher who would be lost in French poetry as he spoke. It was language at its best, figurative, humorous, tongue-in-cheek, picturesque. Over the years, I kept in touch with Professor Sardesai, where he shared information with me on French literature, poets, novelists, his own reflections, and so on. The internet was not yet a household word, uh, word and one felt enlightened just listening to someone knowledgeable who shared the same interests as your own. However, it was much later that I really gave a serious thought to Manohar Rai Sardasai as a writer. He was a poet from Goa who wrote in his mother tongue, Konkani, and also, though to a less extent, in French. Having known Manohar Rai personally, having been associated with him at the Alliance Française, where incidentally we were both among the founding members, I could only think of him as someone where India or Goa and France met together. I would never say that he was westernized, but that he was quite rooted in Western literature and thought, undoubtedly being a scholar in French. Manohar Rai had acquired a PhD in French from the Sorbonne University in Paris, where he spent a good number of years. When he came back to India, he taught French literature in Mumbai and then in Goa. He remained associated with all events related to the French language in India, and he was invited as a resource person in French literature to Indian universities. So my acquaintance with him was always in the context of French and in connection with the language. Soon after his death, and I regret that I didn't start this project earlier, I began to look at his Konkani poetry. And it was there that I found the real Manohar Rai, this essential poet who was so deeply ingrained in his culture, even though his learning led him to the Western classical and romantic <coughs> literature. Swami Vivekananda reflected in one of his lectures that the ancient Greeks reveled in the study and the presentation of the outer world, and the ancient Hindus sought to explore and emphasize the inner world. I realized that these trends met and combined together in Manohar Rai's poetic experience. The purpose of putting together this book is to bring his poetry to non-Konkani non speakers and to those Goans who speak the language but cannot read Konkani well or cannot read it at all. Secondly, it's my aim to make Manohar Rai known as more than only a Kokani poet. An eclectic personality, he was rooted in the Indian tradition, but open to the riches of French literature and largely influenced by French thought. I have written my critical commentary on Sardasai's poetry, both in English as well as in French, since French is the language I have taught throughout my career. And what better way to pay tribute to the writer in question but to write in the language that in a way was his own. In my study of his poetry, I looked at his work from two points of view. The East, which I have termed as his cradle, his origin and identity, and the West, which captured his imagination, both literary and human. Sardasai has been most, mostly acclaimed as a lyrical poet, but there is the other side of him. When he is termed as a people's poet or the Lokkavi, it also implies that he was deeply involved, mentally and emotionally, with the fortunes of his land, Goa. I found his collection, Zad Zage, the most representative of the poet's involvement in the political and social development of Goa. Right through the poems rings the pain of someone who aches for the freedom of his countrymen, subjugated by colonialism. 
His is a reaction of the oppressed, and so he cries for his beloved homeland. A lot of his zeal to see his land, Goa, freed from foreign domination, may perhaps be explained by the effervescent political atmosphere of the 1950s, which he witnessed while he lived in France as a student. That was the period when anti-colonial movements in the French colonies were at their peak, and Sargassai interacted with other young patriots and revolutionaries from the French colonies, ideologically engaged in the National Liberation Front for the Independence of Algeria. Sargassai mentions his encounter and a lasting friendship with the eminent Goan and a prominent political activist, Aquino de Bregasse, who also studied in France and who in turn shared the same position as the Francophone intellectual and revolutionary Franz Fanon. No wonder then that the seeds of discontent blossomed into a full-fledged anti-colonial position which led to much of uh, Manohar Rai's patriotic poetry. However, after the liberation of Goa, the reality did not correspond to the earlier dream. New patterns of social change provoke a reaction from the poet in the form of satirical poems. I quote from his poem, Democracy, originally in Konkani, E. Lokshai. The dark skinned are here, the whites gone. Gone are the things of old, new ones come. Pedro is now Peter. Litru is now litter. Cerveja is out, beer is in. The gravata is off, the tie within. This is democracy. So just a little extract from a very amusing poem that he has written and very satirical as well. In the second half of my critical commentary, I have emphasized more on the influences of French writers and French thought in Sardasai's imagination. I have examined the poet and the writer as a product of the literary tradition of France, the tradition that greatly shaped his ideas, his literary tastes and practice. He describes himself as universal. I quote from one of his poems, I am from Goa and from outside, small and big, from the east and the west, of the earth and the sky, my language is the one I speak. So far, not much has been spoken about Sarvasai as a product of his French studies and the symbiotic relationship he established with the French literary culture and his own native culture and identity. Even though the volume of his Konkani poetry is sizable as compared to his French poetry, Sarvasai wrote not only poetry in French, but his prose writings were more often than not reflections arising from his readings of French writers and philosophers. In a conference paper on the theme of tolerance, Sardesai has based his entire argument on the philosophy of the 16th century French writer François Rabelais and the 18th century French philosopher Voltaire. He has made a comparative study of Rabindranath Tagore and the French 18th century philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau and their philosophy of education, stressing that the influence of Rousseau and on Tagore cannot be ruled out. He went on to translate well-known French works authored by Voltaire, Jean-Paul Sartre, and the work of our own Goan hypnotist, Abbé Faria originally written in French and translated by Manohar Rai into English. Sardasai's poetry is better known for its lyricism, its rhythm which lends itself to a musical interpretation and its humor. His short poems are subtle pearls of wisdom in the manner of Subhashit's. Not much has been said, however, about the social function of Sardasai's poetry. Here too, I can see the role of the poet Sardesai as a prophet poet, much the same as the 19th century French poets Lamartine and Victor Hugo. As his French predecessors did, Sardesai denounced the unbridled pace of modernization in one of his French poems written while in Paris. He tried to shake Goans out of their lethargy and quiet submission 
in the poems, in poems like Zad, Zagay, 14 July and others. I will end my presentation by sharing with you a poem where he deplores the loss of identity and the trading of one's native culture. The original Konkani title is Mez Aile. In English, it would be When the Table Came. Just give me a second. So as I said, this is a poem where he really laments that we have lost our indigenous culture. Came the table, along with the table came the glass, came the cup, came the knife, came the spoon, came the fork, came the plate. No more sitting and rising. Came the table, with the table, the chair. Came the chair, exit the stool, the beauty of the rangoli. No more sitting cross-legged, no more shawl. No more loincloth, no thread around, no ceremonial drape. Gone is the leaf plate, the water sprinkling around, the white cloth, the ritual cup, the five elements. Gone is the ritual spoon, the bell, the tikli, the red mark on the forehead, the mantra, the white mark, the pranayam, the holy ash. Gone is the sandalwood paste. Came the table, came the chair, Came the shoes with the suit, came the garbage from all around. Came the shirt, came the tie, no washing of feet, of hands, no washing the face, the teeth. Enter, sit, enter, eat. Saves this time, saves time, profits. Came the table, exit the kanji, the raw mango, the coconut beet bit. Came the table, came the tea, the coffee, came the bread, the butter, the soup. Gone the fragrance of the incense stick, the light of the oil lamp. How much lost? How much gained? How much gained? How much lost? Came the table, the table, the table. Thank you.